Okay, so the booth is in its final resting place now. There's a few more little things I need to do, so I had to buy some more stuff. So the bill keeps getting bigger, but that's what happens sometimes. So first thing is when I was doing the electronics, I completely forgot that I need headphones in the box. So I had to buy some 6.35 millimeter or quarter inch if you want to use the old terms. I had to buy some jacks basically to put inside for plugging the headphones in. And then I also need a cable to go from the outside into my interface. So I've got an internal jack and an external jack. It's the same size as the XLR and the USB jack, so it's gonna look pretty clean just having three in a row. So I'm gonna put those in. Then to connect those two jacks on the inside, I bought another one of these really short XLR cables. I could use a, a quarter inch or 6.3 mil extension cord, but it was actually cheaper just to get an XLR cable and they do the same thing. It's just two signals and a ground. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the XLR one, just cut this in half and solder one to the inside and one to the outside. Then I just bought a stereo TRS cable or instrument cable and that's just to connect the headphone jack from there to there. The second issue I need to address is that kind of like I suspected, these hinges aren't quite enough. Uh, it didn't rip the hinges out of the timber. The hinges being that they're just one piece on the bottom and one piece on the top, it's actually bent the hinge, not the timber. What's happened is the door with its weight over the two days that it's been assembled has sort of bent down a little bit and it means that the bottom corner is just scraping along the bottom. It's not too bad, but basically I can do one of two things. I can take these hinges off and try and find better ones, which I haven't been able to find at three hardware stores. So in the future, I might look at getting some custom hinges made. My idea is that you would get something a bit longer, which has multiple sections of the hinge and one pin that comes down to the top and you would be able to remove that pin. The reason why I use these ones is so I can lift the door off really easily, but lifting it off means you only have like one connection and it's not very strong. So I think the option where you pull the pin out and then pull the door off is much better. So I need to find somebody who makes really big hinges with a, a pull pin. So that's one option. The second option is I just run with these hinges for now. And one solution I thought of is I could just put some felt underneath the door and let it slide along the ground. But I thought that's a little bit rough and you know, it might peel off or something. So along those same lines, still kind of janky, but like a little bit stronger, I came up with this. So basically I bought this wheel on a bracket. So the idea is that I'm just gonna screw this onto the front of the door at the bottom and I'm gonna lift the door up while I screw it on so that as you open the door, the wheel's just gonna be rolling along the ground. It's just gonna support the weight of the door at the other end, which means it's not so much force on the hinges. That should get me by long enough until I can find a better hinge solution, but for now this will work. Now, the third problem that I had was that the door isn't closing the whole way. It's getting stuck somewhere in the corner here. And my first thought is that the bolts hold the hinges in are slightly too long. So something else that I bought, slightly shorter bolts. So basically I need to take the door off, take all these bolts out and individually replace them with a slightly shorter bolt, which shouldn't be too bad. The fourth thing I'm gonna do is I need to put handles in there. Now the handle on the outside is pretty easy. I can just put it here and put bolts in through the back of that part there. So that's easy enough. But on the inside, I wanna have a handle here and it'll be attached to this sender piece of timber. I don't wanna drill a big hole in this face. So I'm going to actually take the frame off again even though I've done it so many times. I'm gonna drill through the back of the frame and screw the handle in and then reattach this, put the door back on. I've got some M4 by 40 mil screws, which are going to go through this frame. And then I've got some M4 by 20 mil, which are gonna go through the board this way. And they'll both screw into the handles. So it's time to pull off the door. So here I'm taking one bolt out at a time and replacing it immediately and tightening it back up so that I never have to take the actual hinge off, I just replace each bolt. And then I did the same thing for the hinges on the wall panel. This is the perfect demonstration of why I made this part modular. You can see as I unscrew the panel, I can unplug the cables so that it becomes disconnected from the rest of the booth and I can go and work on it somewhere else. 
So here I'm just attaching the third and final barrel jack, which is for the headphones, which matches perfectly with the other two jacks, for the USB and the microphone. I attached another jack to a cable and just fed it through the top and just had to stand on a chair while I screwed it in. Then I can reattach the connections to the panel and screw it back into the ceiling. I had this acoustic foam left over from my cardboard box vocal booth attempt and I found that if I just squeezed it into the corner it would hold itself there just from the friction of the fabric. So I squeezed everything in so it would fit nicely in the area that I was speaking toward. And here I'm just attaching the microphone stand and the microphone. Then I have a short cable to connect the microphone to the booth and plugging my headphones in. And there it is, ready to record. That's it for now for this build series. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Now I just wanna focus on getting some use out of it. So I'm gonna do some testing and then after I've had a chance to use it for a while, I might make another video showing how effective it is and what I like and don't like about it. But for now, that's it. If you did enjoy this series, I would appreciate it if you subscribed to my channel or gave the videos a like. And if you know somebody who wants to make something like this, send it to them and if you have any questions for me then don't be afraid to get in touch i'll try to respond to comments so thanks a lot for watching i'll see you in the next one Ooh.